with the one-liner is it I think it's the most fascinating aerospace project on the planet today. It is a glider designed to fly at the altitudes of the U-2 and the SR-71. Now the Perlin-2 is a special built sailplane and it's basically a space capsule with wings. It has a two-seat cockpit which is sealed so that it stays pressurized and we just add air from a scuba tank as required to keep the pressure where we want it as the, any leaks occur. In the sailplane, you have to be able to maneuver. As we fly in the wave, we're transitioning back and forth along a line of rising air. So, in this case, 90,000 feet is the limit for the sailplane. But the sailplane carries several instrument packages and we've been doing lots of atmospheric research. We're a partner with Airbus and we've been fortunate to attract the quality of volunteers that was necessary to partner with Airbus. Ever since, we've been known as the Airbus Perlin Mission 2. Steve Fawcett was Mission 1, and Airbus is Mission 2. The pilots that fly it say that this is the quietest glider they've ever flown. The sky is getting dark. The curvature of the Earth is now perceptible. So it's like sitting on the doorstep of heaven and looking around. The, the waves are triggered by mountain waves. So they start with wind blowing over the Andes Mountains and on the backside of the mountains, you get a wave field. And those extend up to 30, 32,000 feet, someplace in there, till they hit the tropopause. The tropopause is the, is the band of air that's between the troposphere and the stratosphere. There's a temperature inversion there, and it's death to waves. Turns out the biggest waves in the planet are in the stratosphere. And those waves then can extend up 100,000, 120,000 feet. A flight begins the day before, of course, with aircraft prep preparation. We have to make sure that the oxygen bottles, air bottles are filled, the battery is charged, the airplane is inspected, any squawks from previous flights have been resolved, the science instruments, the cameras are loaded, and that takes at least a day. Then early in the morning, we start with a weather briefing a flight plan and safety briefing, so everybody is on the same page. The briefing is attended by air traffic control. When the time is right and the weather people say, the wave is active, it's still a good day, we tow the glider out to the runway and the egret tow plane follows us out. The egret has the ability to tow us to great altitudes at speeds slow enough that we can follow. Well, th this is virtually the only airplane that can do it. The, uh, uh, it has the performance. The airplane was certified to 50,000 feet. It's got a world record during certification of 53,000 feet. The other thing is, is the gliders don't fly fast. Anything else that can get up into the stratosphere uh, you know, are jets, high performance things that go way too fast. The, the, uh, the glider's uh, tow speed that, that they like is around 80 knots. And so we uh, rotate at about 75 knots and can climb out at 80 knots all the way up to uh, uh, our world record tow, which was 47,100 feet. And we've done 11 uh, world record tows all into the stratosphere. That was the big advancement in this mission is that uh, it took way too long for the glider being towed by a small Pawnee to, uh, to get up. They had to fight through the troposphere and all the turbulence and, and the weather and everything. And that's where the egret's magic showed up. It was able to, uh, we were able to take off. We can climb at 1,200 feet a minute, get above the clouds that are coming down over the Andes and uh, get up into the stratosphere in about an hour and, hour and 15 minutes or something like that. The downside is you work long, you work 
10 hour, 12 hour days, you're a volunteer. Uh, but whenever you're thinking, you know, I think I'll go do something else or I'll retire. The mission, it says, we want to go explore the biggest waves on the planet. We want to see how those waves change the weather around the globe. We want to see how those waves cause the ozone hole. We want to see if those waves are dangerous to airliners that might encounter them unknowingly. We want to test if wings are any good on the planet Mars. You think, I can't think of anything I'd rather do. But again, the mission, uh, the mission says, there's nothing that I could do that would be more exciting, more interesting than this.